What's the best place to find video games? That's a very subjective question. Let's dive a little deeper in today's episode of Bargain Game Hunting 101. So first off, I wanted to thank everybody for the response to the first Bargain Game Hunting 101 episode. Everyone seemed to generally like it, so I appreciate that. Um, I know that one was literally just a talking head kind of episode, and this one is also. I'm eventually going to add some more interesting stuff like you know, on-location content to it. Um, but for now, I'm just kind of sticking with the talking head stuff. Um, but I do think this insight is still going to help people. That's the goal anyway, is to try to educate you and to help you become the best game hunters you can out in the wild. So today, we're going to go over the different places you can game hunt. Um, so this sounds like a very basic concept, but there's actually a lot of nuance to it. I will tell you this before we dive any deeper, and that is... Deciding where you game hunt is not an easy, oh, that just makes the most sense situation. There are a lot of factors at play, the biggest of which is results will definitely vary. There are some places that I know where thrift shops are the place to be. There are some places where pawn shops are the place to be. There are some places that have great flea markets. There are some places that have amazing local game stores. It entirely depends on your area. So I would highly suggest as if you're first starting out and not sure where to begin, go exploring. Check out the pawn shops, check out the thrift shops, check out garage sales, check out flea markets, wherever you can. Go exploring for yourself and try to figure out, okay, what is the best course of action moving forward? Because no matter what I say here, it might not be true for your area. I know for my area in particular, some places are definitely better than others. And I've found which places are better than others. And those are the ones that I focus on. And I will also suggest once you find something that works, stick with it. Don't go like constantly bouncing around a bunch of different things if you know they're not going to work. So it's better to be frequently places where you know you're going to succeed rather than going to places that, oh, you might, you didn't find anything for a month here. Maybe this time will be different. It probably won't be. But I would suggest if there's a place that's consistent, keep going to it. So. With all that being said, let's go ahead and go over the advantages and disadvantages of every type of place to game hunt. And for starters, I'm going to say this. We're not going to talk about online. Obviously, online is kind of the, the future. That's where a lot of us buy everything at this point. We order it online, we get it delivered to our house, don't have to go to a store. That's kind of the direction that the world of commerce is going. However, it's, it's not as much fun, and also there's more gambles involved with online. Hence the reason why the condition report exists with GameStop, and even some other sellers too. Like, you don't necessarily know what condition a game is going to be in when you buy it online. Now, eBay is pretty good about that because they typically have to disclose exactly what condition it's in and if it's not you can return it and get your money back but sometimes they don't mention something sometimes you know it's not exactly what you want so if you're looking for specific conditions or specific items in general like something very very specific like a variant going in person is the way to go and oftentimes going in person is also the better way to get better deals because everybody sells online so Every now and again, yeah, you can find some great deals online, but in person is where a lot of the best stuff happens. So I'm not gonna be talking about online. I could do an episode online in the future if you want, but I think for now, we're just gonna stick with in-person game hunting types and methods. So 
Here are the main ones that most people who do retro and, and current game hunting go to. Here are the places we go. Game stores. This includes you know, GameStop, your local game store. Um, I guess we can just call it retail. Um, you can also include like a Walmart, a Target, you know, places that sell video games. Basically any store that sells video games, that's retail. You have pawn shops. Pawn shops are secondhand stores where people will sell an item to a pawn shop to get cash, and then the pawn shop will turn around and sell that item to someone else to make a profit themselves. Usually the pawn shop won't pay a lot for most items, and then they'll sell it for significantly more than what they paid for it. Um, I will say when it comes to video games, pawn shops tend to sell them fairly low for the most part, because oftentimes what happens is someone brings in their console in a bunch of games. The pawn shop is mostly after the actual console because those tend to make a good amount of money for the pawn shops. So the games are kind of throw in. Now, some pawn shops do pay up for games and those are the ones that you're gonna have a little more trouble at, but um, if, if they're buying them in bundles, games are often kind of cheap at pawn shops, but I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into pawn shops later. We're gonna do deep dives into each one of these at a later time. This is kind of more of a broad overview. Um, so, and pawn shops, I would say are my specialty. That's the one I go to the most. If you've watched Barman Game Hunter, you know that. Um, pawn shops are where I do my best work. So we're gonna talk about pawn shops later. But pawn shops, um, secondhand stores, we'll go over advantages and disadvantages in a second. Then we have thrift shops, secondhand store. A lot of times thrift shops are donated items, so they don't actually, the, the person who gives the item to the thrift shop doesn't gain anything. They're mostly just getting rid of whatever they had and then the thrift shop turns around and sells it, typically for charity, not all the time, but oftentimes it's to benefit a charity. Um, those are hit or miss. Sometimes you do well, sometimes you can't. It depends on the thrift shop. But again, we'll talk about it a little bit more later. Then you have flea markets. Flea markets or outdoor markets usually run like on weekends or, you know, people set up, they pay money to set up a table and then they sell their items in this location. So it's kind of like a garage sale, but instead of it being at your residence, it's at a, like a park or a location that's specified for flea market. So that tends to work pretty well. And a lot of people are going there specifically to buy things. You don't have to like try to bring people to your garage sale. And the last is garage sales. Um, these of course are people who usually hold the garage sale at their own residence. They set up tables, they price everything themselves. And oftentimes you can negotiate. Sometimes you can score really big. Sometimes you, you don't, it really just depends. So those are the main five in terms of different locations that you can game hunt in person. So let's go over the advantages and disadvantages for each one. We're gonna start with retail. Now, in terms of abundance in games, retail is often the best for that. So if you're looking for a bunch of stuff, or if you're looking for specific things and you don't wanna go online, retail is often the best for that. Also, if you're looking for new or sealed product, retail is the best for that. Um, there are oftentimes, especially during certain periods of the year, you can find some really good sales at retail. GameStop runs sales all the time, of course, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, there's plenty of opportunities to buy games at a pretty good discount at retail. However, they're not very often going to be cheaper than the other destinations. Now, if you're buying a new game, and especially if you're buying a game to play it, if that's your only goal, retail is often a good way to go. The other thing too that you have to keep in mind, and this is kind of one of the negatives of retail, is retail is also the most accessible. So a lot of other people will be doing the exact same thing. 
they won't think about the other methods. They're going to think about retail. They'll go into a store and buying a game that they want. So the competition is pretty fierce at retail when it comes to picking up specific stuff, especially if you're trying to resell. Um, but you mean, you might get lucky. It depends. Um, the biggest things to keep in mind when you are game hunting at retail, pay attention online to sales, pay attention to various discounts, pay attention to specific game titles. Obviously when a game first comes out, it's probably not going to be the best time to get it for cheap unless you just don't care about that, want to play it when it comes out. In that case, just go for it. But pay attention to sales, pay attention to discounts. Um, I would definitely say if you're looking to get games on the cheap at retail, the best time is, you know, right around Thanksgiving for Black Friday and then throughout the holiday season. Retailers do pretty consistent discounts on a lot of stuff, especially video games that came out earlier in the year. Those tend to be fairly discounted. Now, if it's stuff that comes out right before, don't expect major discounts, but stuff that came out earlier in the year or stuff that you're willing to hold on, you know, wait for a better price, that's the time to strike at retail. Wait for the holiday sales and then you can, you can score some good stuff then. So that's retail. <clears throat> then we got pawn shops. Now, pawn shops have a number of advantages and disadvantages. First advantage, pawn shops for the most part, not all of them, but for the most part are negotiable. So when I say negotiable, that means you can talk to the salesperson or the client, the clerk about getting an item for cheaper. Rather than just taking the price that they're telling you, you can attempt to lower the price by saying, hey, would you do this? Now, I know not everyone's going to be comfortable in doing that. Personally, I don't care. I mean, pawn shops are used to it. A lot of pawn shops, they even make a big deal about we're negotiable. If you want to buy something, talk to us. We'll try to work with you. Um, so just keep that in mind whenever you're going to a pawn shop. If you're not a huge fan of the initial price, ask for a discount. Worst they can say is no, and then you'll just pay the price that they ask for. But being negotiable is really nice, and that is a benefit to a number of these game hunting methods is that they are negotiable. Retail isn't really negotiable. So that one, kind of the price that it's advertised, that's the price. There are exceptions to that, and I will talk about one of those later. Um, but retail is typically not negotiable, so that's why you kind of have to pay attention to sales whereas pawn shops are. Also, like I mentioned earlier, pawn shops typically don't put a very strong value on video games. It's more so consoles or accessories that they put a lot of value into. So like people, they'll buy a bundle that includes like a PS5, a handful of games and an extra controller the PS5 and the controller, they're gonna sell for pretty, you know, pretty solid profit. The games they basically got as a throw-in, and they're, they'll probably be willing to sell those for fairly cheap. Now, some pawn shops, you know, look up prices or they they price them accordingly. You'll especially see this with Nintendo published games, especially on the Switch. So, like, you'll see Mario Kart 8 priced at like. $40 at a pawn shop, which to be fair, that's about what it goes for. If not, that's that's actually kind of a little cheaper than what you would pay at GameStop for Mario Kart 8. But they'll price it up because it's a Switch game and it's a, it's a first party Nintendo game. They don't do that all the time, but sometimes they do. I know in my experience, oftentimes first party Nintendo and PlayStation 5 are often priced up. So if you're collecting for Xbox series, they typically just think, oh, it's an Xbox One game. And so you can oftentimes get it for a discount because they don't know any better. Just keep that in mind that some pawn shops, if, they, if they're not gamers and they don't know the difference between them, they oftentimes by default price up Switch games and price up PS5 games. 
Also, older games tend to be a bit cheaper. So if you're looking for older gen stuff like 360, PS3, Wii, um, or older, they usually don't put a lot of value into those. So you can often get those for pretty darn cheap. Uh, so negotiable, they don't overprice. Sometimes they do, but they, they tend to undervalue video games as opposed to consoles. And the other big thing that I think is a huge benefit to pawn shops is relationship building. One of the reasons why I suggested when you go to a various destination, you should keep going to it rather than branching out too far is because building relationships is key and pawn shops are one of the best places to do that at. So if you've been watching the Bargain Game Hunter series, you know one of the pawn shops I go to all the time is Cash America Pawn. The reason why I go to that Cash America Pawn all the time is first of all, they know me very well. Anytime I walk in, they're like, hey, what's up? Um, they always check on me, see how I'm doing, um, you know, say that they missed me. They know what I'm here for. I always look for video games. They usually tell me, hey, here's what we got. If we got anything new, they'll tell me. And they usually cut me a pretty darn good deal without even asking. I don't have to ask for a discount there. They automatically know what they got to do. They'll cut me a deal. Um, and even then, I sometimes ask for additional discounts and usually they'll work with me. So building relationships is key. Pawn shops are one of those places where you can do that and it will become the most fruitful. So definitely good. So that's pawn shops. Again, we're going to dive deeper into all these later on, but I wanted to give kind of a general overview of the benefits and disadvantages to various game hunting methods. So that's pawn shops. Thrift shops. Thrift shops I have a very love-hate relationship with. Um, so a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers especially, hit up Goodwill all the time. Goodwill is a thrift shop, but it's also kind of retail at the same time. So like they're not negotiable and sometimes they'll underprice stuff pretty severely but oftentimes they'll also overprice stuff pretty severely. And specifically with the case of Goodwill, lately they've been sending most of their video game related stuff to their website because they do have a website that does like auctions and a lot of Goodwills don't even carry video games. They'll, as soon as they get a video game donated, they send it off to the website. So, Goodwill is very hit and miss. Now, if you're in an area where Goodwills do carry games, great. Oftentimes you can find some great deals there. I went to my local Goodwill a couple times and both times I found pretty much nothing. So I just stopped going to Goodwill. It's not worth it. It's also really out of the way for me. So it wasn't worth the effort to go when, I, when my pawn shops were far better. Um, now I do have another thrift shop, which actually I need to go back to, and I might go back maybe in a couple weeks, um, that often carries a lot of video games and they're negotiable because they're a locally owned thrift shop as opposed to a Goodwill. So thrift shops are kind of different. If you're specifically looking at Goodwill or like second and, or not second and Charles, that's a retail stop. Um, Goodwill or I forgot the other, oh, um, something St. Paul. Those are kind of like retail, but they're, they sell secondhand stuff. Um, and then there are smaller local thrift shops. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're bad. There's, there's a couple other thrift shops I went to. Um, one of them is just awful. <laughs> like they rarely have video games and when they do, they're super overpriced and they won't budge on them. I'm like, why? <laughs> No one's gonna buy it for that price. It's probably been sitting on the shelf for years just because you overpriced it. No one's gonna buy it. So thrift shops are kind of hit and miss. I do have my one thrift shop that I really like, but other than that, most of the thrift shops in my area are kind of missed. Um, just keep in mind that like thrift shops like Goodwill are basically like retail, so they're not gonna negotiate. But if it's more a local thrift shop, they might. And sometimes you can score big at thrift shops it just depends. Sometimes they super overpriced. Thrift shops are kind of the ultimate like risk reward where you could score big, but you might get nothing. You never know. Depends on your area. So I would definitely say investigate your thrift shops, see how they are. If they're charging $7.99 for Madden 18 on the Xbox One, 
probably not worth your time. But if you find a copy of Fire Emblem on the Wii for five bucks, good for you. <laughs> flea markets. Um, so flea markets are, again, they can be hit or miss. It really depends on your negotiation skills as well as how savvy the area you are in is. Now, flea markets are notorious because you can have a bunch of resellers who basically just have a shop and they'll market price all of their games. And I mean, if you're willing to pay market price, you're cool. I know for me, because I enjoy game hunting and my goal is to pay the least amount of money possible, I'd rather not pay market price if I can avoid it. So I don't like going to these reseller booths unless they underprice something, which, which does happen. But I typically try to avoid the reseller boots. Um, and you can also have just a regular person who's just trying to clear out their house. They had a box of video games from when they were kids and uh, they didn't want them anymore. And you can buy those for like a dollar a piece. Depends on the area, depends on how savvy the sellers are. Um, your best bet there is just walk around, find who has video games, test the waters, see who uh, see if the person is willing to budge, see if they're a reseller. Oftentimes, if they have a whole bunch of video games on a table, it's probably a reseller and they're probably not willing to budge much. They might be, but typically no. Um, but if you find like a table with a, a couple things on it and it's got like two games, they might be willing to budge on those for a good amount. So uh, negotiation is also key at flea markets. And if it's a seller who comes out all the time, uh, you can also build relationships with them as well. Um, one trick that a lot of people use is, you know, buy something for asking price and then ask for a discount for the next one. Like if you're planning on getting multiple things from that person. If something is not like super overpriced, take it at regular price and then see if they'll work with you on a follow-up item. So that's flea markets. And the last is garage sales. So garage sales, Again, it's kind of similar to flea markets, but the only difference is you're going to somebody's house. They also don't happen super, super often. I mean, there are some people who hold regular garage sales, but typically it's a like, oh, we're moving and we need to get rid of a bunch of stuff or we just need to declutter. Um, so here's you know all my kids' toys for five cents a piece. It's often a good idea to check ahead of time to see if they're going to have video games. Some sellers actually advertise when you, like if you look in the paper or online um, that there will be video games at a garage sale. So, but whenever that happens, oftentimes the, the vultures are circling. So you're going to want to get there early. And that's just a general good idea for garage sales, especially the earlier you get there the better chance you have of finding video games. Because oftentimes video games are gonna be the, one of the hot ticket items that people are gonna pick up real fast. So if there's a sale that you know for a fact is gonna have video games or that you're highly expecting to have video games, I would get there early. Um, try to be one of the first ones to the sale. Uh, try to get to those games as quick as possible so that way you can have your pick. Also ask if they have any. Uh, oftentimes there are some that maybe they just have some at home that they, you know, they're not using. Maybe they have an old Wii that they got back in 2007 that they played for like a year and then just stopped. You might be able to get that for cheap. Um, it never hurts to ask at garage sales if they have video games because sometimes you can score really big. And the best part about those is because they're not out people don't know about it. <laughs> so you'll be the first one to see them. So even if you don't see video games at a garage sale, I would just ask, be like, hey, do you have any video games? Maybe suggest some consoles like, oh, Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, Sega. Um, maybe they've got some, you never know. Worst comes to worst, they don't, and you just leave empty handed, but yeah. Um, so those are some, like a general overview of the biggest game hunting methods. I did have one that I didn't mention earlier that I will I will throw in here as kind of a bonus and that is conventions. So conventions are kind of a mix between retail 
and like a garage sale or a flea market. I'd say close to a flea market because there are vendors who put up their own boots and they oftentimes will sell games for sometimes good prices, sometimes the asking price is, is what it's going for. Um, but the longer the con goes, or especially right before a convention ends, um, you might be able to get some good deals because, I mean, they brought all that stuff, but I doubt those vendors want to take all of it home. So I would suggest, you know, if you're going to a con, ask them, hey, you know, would you be able to work with me? Some vendors are negotiable, some are not. Um, but it's a good way to, to, you know, test the waters. And usually conventions, you can find some good stuff, oftentimes some rarer stuff, but you'll probably have to pay up for it. Just keep that in mind. So with that, that is kind of the the gist of game hunting out in public. Um, again, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into each and every type and give you some pro tips and tricks for each one as we go. But... This is kind of just an overview of the different types so that way you can kind of decide which one is the best for me to kind of focus on. I know for me personally, I focus on pawn shops. Pawn shops are my bed and butter. Um, they're the easiest for me to get to. I have good relationships with a lot of the pawn shops around my area. Um, I have that one thrift shop that I go to and every now and again, I'll get something good there, but it depends. Um, but it's mostly pawn shops that I do well and retail. I do decently well at retail. So it really just depends on your area. So take a look at your area and then, you know, use this video as kind of a guide to help you figure out what is the best method for you to be game hunting. And that is going to do it for this episode of Bargain Game Hunting 101. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you enjoy this content and want to experience more of it, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell. That way you know when new videos drop. I will try to drop one of these every once in a while. It's not gonna be like a regular series, but um, whenever I have some time and want to discuss game hunting methods, I will try to share an episode. And I'm hoping my next one might be my deep dive into pawn shops. I'd like to do a deep dive into pawn shops because again, that's my bread and butter. And I think that's the one that I have the best expertise on, but we'll see, we'll see what we get to. So that's going to do it. See you next time on Bargain Game Hunting 101. Bye-bye.